All right, hi everyone. I am here with uh, Greg Mailing, the publisher of my book and the owner of Freelance Academy Press, to introduce The Art and Practice of 16th Century German Fencing. Ta-da! <laughs> A guide to the use of Joachim Meyer's rapier. Um, this was a pretty big undertaking for myself. Um, I didn't think I could write a book. I've never done something even remotely close to this. Um, but I forced myself to sit down and actually start writing. I wrote a page a day, if not more. Um, and a year and a half later or so, this is what I got. Um, it, it was something that actually turned into a fun project for me. I look forward to actually sitting down. Um, I did a lot of the pictures first because I'm a very visual person uh, and then wrote the text to accompany the, the imagery. Uh, so the image that we see on the cover is from the Rostock manual um, attributed to Meyer and it is virtually a cutting diagram. We should see all the cut lines um, and I decided to superimpose swords over on top of the cutting diagram. Um, so the way that I explain all the techniques is using the cutting diagram. Let's see if we can get that in focus. Um, and seeing the sword from our perspective and our opponent's perspective. Um, so I thought that would be the clearest way to show the sword diagrams. Yeah, and, and I'll say as someone who's published several books now on rapier fencing and has certainly read quite a few, it's a clever approach because it deals with the single biggest problem of linear fencing, which is how do you show two actions that are moving through four essentially pie positions in space um, without simply shooting it in profile at which point the weapons get and their crossings get completely lost. So <clears throat> the solution is basically to shoot it first person and remove the humans from the equation. And uh, I think Rob does a good job of that. Um, there are humans in there. There are plenty of little poser diagrams to show you what to do what you're, as well as movement lines. But you'll see that part of what uh, we've done is if you just follow where the side ring is, you can track the actions of the blades. So even when there's two swords, you're able to figure out which one is the attackers and which one is the defenders. Yeah, and in some cases, I have just the diagram with the swords to explain the actions of the sword, uh, sometimes with the model to show the positions of the body and how the body rotates with each action. Um, sometimes I include footwork diagrams when I'm talking about footwork. Um, so I've parsed out uh, different areas of fencing. Um, I have a, a section on simply describing what the sword is doing. Then I move on to describe how the terms of the body support what the sword is doing. Uh, and then I move on talking about footwork, how the footwork supports the uh, rotations of the body and how they're all supported within each other, within his system. I think might be a good little thing to point out too, Rob. Oh, well, here you can see, for example, how the blade relationships are created. So I don't know if the camera will be able to pick that up, but you can certainly see that this is the foreground sword. So the um, ring to protect the back of the hand is to the outside. So you know that the hand is uh, set up with the edge turned to the left. Here's the attacker's hand. So you can see that you're taking the inside of their flat and overbinding onto their false edge or short edge. So anyway, I think it'll make quite a bit of sense when you see it all put together. Um, and I think it's worth noting that, uh, that part of the reason um, Rob didn't use photography was that uh, in many ways, the details of the photographic models uh, created less clarity than the poser diagrams combined with the swords. So it's a really unusual approach. And I think what might, um, be interested to show also is that there's a, a series of tactical diagrams that Rob developed to try to put this in some sort of context. Now we don't want to reveal the, the brilliance of this diagram, but uh, it is it is the swirling fight of Meyer's rapier, and of course you're going to have to uh, you know give us some money and actually buy the book to find out how it works. But it's it's definitely a unique approach, and I think um, I think you'll guys will all like it.